Hello. In the last video, we focused on the visual aspects of our torus. And by doing so, we defined four things. We defined two radii, which are A and B. A being the radius of our cross-sectional circle, and B being the radius from the origin to the centre of our cross-sectional circle. Okay? We defined two angles, which are also our two variables for our vector valued function, which we'll come on to later. S was the angle made by the radius A as it sweeps two pi radians to create our cross sectional circle. And T is the angle made by our radius B as it sweeps about the z axis. So the height of the torus Z will only vary because the angle s varies okay and the x and y values will vary because s and t will vary so these are pretty basic points and of course it's easy to see that the z value will only vary because s varies t is got nothing to do with the height of the torus it's simply the angle made as b sweeps around the z-axis at a constant level. Because b is fixed at the centre of the torus, to the centre of the circle, it stays at a constant level. Therefore, varying t will not vary our height or the z-value, okay? It's easy to see as s varies, the point on the circumference made by a will vary because it goes around the whole circle, okay? Two pi radians. The last point with our x and y values will vary because s and t will vary, is slightly more complex. However, we will go over that in shortly. Um, but if you want to have a go now, you can try and derive the vector valued function. So pause the video and you can come back when ready. Okay, so if you had a go at that, well done. If not, we are going to go over the concepts right now. So, the general form for a vector valued function, R of S and T, where R is of course a vector valued function of two variables, S and T, is equal to three component functions, X, Y and Z. Okay, where x and y are functions of s and t, and z is a function of s. So, first of all, we are going to define our z component, first of all, because that's the easiest. So, let's look at this diagram. We have our z-axis, and we have the x-y plane, and here is our cross-sectional circle. Okay, this is our fixed radius b, and that's our fixed radius a. So as you can see, z is this distance here. So as you may be able to see by just looking at the diagram, that as s varies, a of course is also going to vary, and the height, like we mentioned just before, will also vary. Okay, z will be negative down here, and it'll go from as s goes from zero to two by radians, z will go from naught to its maximum point. Okay, so using basic trigonometry, you can say that the sine of s is equal to z divided by a, okay, and therefore z is equal to a sine s. Okay, that's all there is for our z component. Now it gets a bit more technical with our x and y components. Now, let's go back to this diagram quickly. So we have B and A. Now this distance from the centre of the circle to this point X, okay, it is given by A cosine of S, okay. So therefore the distance from the centre of the torus to the distance X is B plus A cosine of S, okay. This distance will vary. B doesn't vary but A cosine S will vary as the angle s varies. So we're literally looking at this distance from the centre 
okay, to the point that is projected by the point on the circumference on the xy plane. Okay, if that makes sense. So as s is up here, if s was 90 degrees to the, um, sorry, if a was 90 degrees to the xy plane, s would be, of course, uh, 90 degrees. Okay, therefore, x will be 0. Okay, from the centre of the circle. So therefore, when a is 90 degrees, then the distance from the centre of the torus will, of course, just be b. Okay? So, using that, we can look at our another diagram. So, in this diagram, we are looking down from the z-axis. You can see the z-axis axis given by the circle is pointing up towards the camber here. Okay, this is the xy plane. And therefore, this distance here is b plus a cosine of s, like we defined earlier, this total distance. Okay. So, because b plus a cosine s varies, okay, y and x will vary, okay, but t also varies because it goes from 0 to 2 pi. It's going to sweep all the way around. And this length will vary because b plus a cosine s varies. Okay, so therefore we can define our x and y components. x is b sine t plus sine t a cosine s because the sine of t is equal to x divided by b plus a cosine s. Okay, just using simple trigonometry there. This is a 90 degree triangle, right angle triangle. And using the similar method for y, we can say y is equal to b cosine t plus a cosine s times cosine of t. Okay? And therefore, if we use our format we just had at the top of the page of vector valued function, we can then say the vector valued function for the surface of our torus, okay, r of s and t is equal to our x component plus our y component plus our z component, okay? As t goes from 0 to 2 pi and s goes from 0 to 2 pi. So this vector valued function r of s and t will map out the surface of the torus, which we call sigma, capital sigma, okay? So this will be very important for the next video when we calculate the surface integral.